A disclaimer before I start this video, I'm not an expert in music or guitar playing. I'm not up there with the greats like Ali Abhat or DJ Khalid. So anything that I say in this video would be influenced by only my past experiences with music. So now that I've said that, I think I can talk to you about the terms that are on a need to know basis or something you should just know. All of this information would be derived from a few websites that I found and I would link every website down in the description if you want to check that out yourself. So you can read up on these terms that I'm going to speak on, on on the websites before watching this video to get a head start. Or you can watch this video first and get the cliff notes from that website because I talk a lot in this video. On a little side note, this video is not going to contain a lot of Western classical music terms. Terminology basically means the names of things. And in this case, it's going to be a lot about playing guitar and all of the techniques that are used in it. And I'm going to demonstrate a lot of techniques on the guitar for you. There is seriously a lot of stuff here, so it's going to be a long video. I'm going to go with basic terms, then intermediate ones, and then the advanced ones. So first things first, we're going to start with the parts of the guitar. Starting from the bottom, you have the output jack. This is pretty self-explanatory. I don't have to explain what this is. But if you haven't seen anything like this before, this is basically where the wires go in. Then the other end of the wire goes into an amplifier, the PC, or the, that speaker behind me. Moving up, you have the dials. This one is labeled as volume. So this is self-explanatory again. This is the volume dial. The one is the one is the least volume and the 10 is the most volume. These other two dials are for controlling the pickup. I will get into that later what a pickup is. But basically, if you see these two things here, these are the pickups. This is also a pickup. So these are the three pickups on the guitar. I have never used these before, but I think I think the upper one goes for this pickup and the lower one goes for the bottom pickup. If you're using an acoustic guitar, don't worry, just skip the parts that you don't need. There's also a sound hole on the acoustic guitar. This one doesn't have it because it's an electric guitar. The sound hole basically amplifies the volume of the strings. If I play something like this, it doesn't have much volume because there's no sound hole in this one. Of course, there are other electric guitars that have sound holes in them. They're called semi-acoustic electric guitars. Next up, we have the toggle switch. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, you can see it. So this has five levels to it. It's one, two, three, four, and five. Now this plays into the pickups that I was talking about. Now this might be a bit confusing, but I'll break it down for you. The first position of the pickup controls this one. It amplifies the, it amplifies the signal going through this pickup. And since it's closer to the bridge, it's going to amplify all of the bass notes, the notes that are on the 6th, 5th and 4th strings. The second position of the pickup uses both of these. Now this gives you a, a lower mid tone and that basically means that notes that are up here or up here, the 5th fret on the 5th string sound more clearer to you. The third position solely uses the middle pickup. This gives you that mid tone, that mid range that is between the bass and the treble and that contributes to a lot of mid range frequencies obviously. The fourth position of the pickup again uses both of these, the upper one and the middle one and it's usually around the higher mid, it's called the higher mid frequency. And finally the last position of the pickup is solely this pickup and this amplifies solely the higher frequencies. So if you want a warmer sound, if you want to use the low strings only, you would want this on the first position. If you want brighter sound and you're strumming on the electric guitar or playing a solo, then you would want to use the fifth position of the pickup. After the pickup, we can talk about why there's a whole white section on this guitar. You can, you can see that it is a black guitar. So other than the artistic nature of this white plate on the guitar, is to prevent the guitar from scratches if you're using picks because generally when you're picking sometimes you have no control over how fast you do it so sometimes it kind of scratches this plate a little and this white piece is called a pick guard you can also find one on the acoustic guitar i could show you a picture now now to talk about this thing this is called a vami bar or a tremolo bar the function of this bar is pretty simple i will demonstrate it right now So as you can see, the tremolo bar is used to create a kind of vibrato to it without actually creating a vibrato with your fingers. So as I press this down, the bridge rises and it reduces some of the tension that is on the strings. And that is why the strings go down in pitch. Because if you loosen a string, it goes down in pitch. And that is exactly what this does. But it also brings it back up. So next we have the bridge. 
Now this particular bridge is a floating bridge. So the floating bridge basically helps in keeping the strings in tune. It doesn't matter how much I move around the guitar or playing it like this, the strings don't go out of tune that easily. And, that, and that's all because of this floating bridge. And now we can talk about the pickups. So the pickups are strips of electromagnetic metal and they're inside this structure right here. Now their function is to change the tone of the guitar. Without the pickups, you would not be able to use this um, toggle switch or any of these to any of these two tone dials. The pickups also help in reducing the noise when you connect it to an amplifier or a speaker. These are the two traditional pickups that can be found on almost any electric guitar, but but, but this double pickup is actually a humbucker pickup. And this is the one that reduces a lot of resonant frequencies that hum around the guitar. Now, all of these are in the lower body of the guitar and that is exactly what it's called the body of the guitar. This whole section is the body of the guitar. Now moving up, you have this long section of the guitar and this is called a neck. Now this neck has a lot of functions. First of all, it connects the body to the head. That is, that is pretty simple. The second and the most important function of the neck is to keep the strings straight. Finally, the last function of the neck is for you to fret on the neck. Also, this is not one of the functions, but a lot of guitars have a nut on top of the neck and going inside the neck from this you have something called the truss rod which which keeps the neck in a straight position now the truss rod serves a great function it helps the neck in being straight and also helps the strings stay as much minimal distance they can be from the fretboard on the front face of the neck there is the fretboard which contains a lot of places that you can place your finger on. And all of these places have a special name. And on the fretboard, you have frets. For example, this is the first fret, this is the fifth fret, and this is the twelfth fret. There are markings on the fretboard, as you can see. The first mark is on the third fret, the second mark is on the fifth, the third is on the seventh, the fourth is on the ninth. There are also extra markings here, but, but nobody really uses those unless they are professional guitarists. Reaching the top of the guitar, you don't have a lot of parts up here. There's the full headstock, there's there's tuning pegs, there are six tuning pegs for six strings, and then there's the nut. It's a piece of plastic on top of the neck that helps the strings stay in place, just like the bridge does in the bottom. Now moving on from parts of the guitar to the actual techniques used in it and the terminology of some of the techniques, I'm gonna start with something really basic and then I'm gonna go up in difficulty. Of course, the very first thing you do is just fretting. This is the first technique. So moving on. Now you have something called the hammer or hammer on. It's a really basic technique and I think you can understand it if you look close enough. So let me explain. You first pick one fret wherever it may be. It can be here, it can be here, it can be here. And then when you pick, when you pick it, when you pick it for the first time, you don't pick for the second time. And then you hammer on your middle finger or your ring finger onto the next fret, wherever, wherever that next fret may be. But it has to be on the same string. The one that you just plugged, it has to be on that. So the hammer on could be here or here or by your last finger, which is a pretty difficult thing to do. So I suggest that you practice this with your middle or your ring. And you can only use hammer ons while going up. Another basic and important thing that you might not understand yet, going up and down. Going up is when you fret and fret closer to the bridge. The bridge is here on your right hand and the closer you get to it, the higher you go on the fretboard. And going down is the opposite of it, you go down. Now the next technique is the exact opposite of a hammer-on. It's a pull-off. So in order to pull off this technique, you would first need to put two fingers on the fretboard wherever they may be and you have to pick so when you pick the finger that is closest to the bridge so in this case the fret that is pressed by my ring finger is going to ring out and then i can use my ring finger to pluck the string i don't use my right hand to pluck the string again i i pluck it first time so it rings out my ring finger and then i do this i use my ring finger to pluck the string i can't do this, so I have to use my left hand, my, my fretting hand, to pick the string right there and that way it's going to sound this note. So let me give you an example to clear some things up. So 
So you have to understand that you have to release the finger downwards and not outwards. If you just lift your finger up, it's not going to make that sound. So you have to push it downwards to actually pluck the string. You can also combine the previous two techniques, the hammer on and the pull off. Remember to only pluck once with your right hand and then using the fingers to pluck the second time around. The next technique is a lot simpler, it's called the slide. You can imagine what that is. Let me break it down if you still didn't get it. You pluck once and you slide your finger up. You can also do it down, but to learn it efficiently you have to slide it up first. It's a lot easier on your fingers if you do it on the top three strings because the bottom strings are a lot sharper than the top ones obviously. So you pluck once and then you slide up while maintaining that note. And this is where another term comes up, sustain. Sustain basically means what it sounds like, sustaining a note longer. Like plucking it and letting it ring out, that's how you use a chord. You play a chord and then let it ring out, that is called a sustain. So coming back to the slide, that is where this comes in. You have to play a note, let it ring out, and then you slide it up. So this is where the sustain property comes in. You have to pick a note, let it ring out, and then you have to slide it up. And of course you have to do it while pressing down on the fretboard. You don't lift your finger anywhere while sliding. I'm not going to talk a lot about picking and fretting because it's kind of really self-explanatory that you have to fret. You have to press down with all the power you have. And if it doesn't sound good, you just have to do it over and over again until it does. There's really no special technique to it. It, it just is how it is. But talking about picking stuff with the pick, there is a basic technique to it. First off, you have to know how to hold the pick. The pick is held by the two fingers, that is the thumb and the index finger. The thumb remains straight, but the index finger is bent down. So it has to be like this. The index is bent down and the thumb is straight. And make sure it is sideways like this. And you have to really grasp it. You have to slide it a lot under there. And once you got it in your hand correctly, the next part becomes quite self-explanatory. In order to pick the note, you just have to pick it down. You just move your wrist. You don't use the forearm while picking. Of course you use the forearm when, you rhythm, when you're strumming rhythmically, but in normal picking you don't use the forearm. You just use your wrist to pick. And there are two, and there are two main ways to pick. The first way is just down strokes, and that is what it sounds. It's down stroking. You just pick it down. And the second technique is the alternate picking, which uses down stroke and up stroke as well. Kind of like this. And then there is a bit advanced method of picking, which is called the hybrid picking, which uses the previous two at the same time. So you're picking down and then when you feel like it, you pick up sometimes. So it kind of looks like this. Now that I've explained the picking, let me get into the techniques again. So this next technique is a bit more complex to do. You heard it right, the most beautiful technique in guitar playing, bending. It's not as simple as it looks because there are a lot of factors that contribute to a good bend. So first of all, you have to understand what bending is. You know the distance between the 5th fret and the 7th fret and what sound it makes. The 5th fret makes a lower sound than the 7th fret. It makes a lower frequency than the 7th fret. So bending the note allows you to slide into that note from the starting point. So taking the 12th fret as the starting point and you and if you want to bend this up to the 14th fret you do a full step bend. There's also a half step bend which is just bending the 12th fret to the 13th fret but the full step bend is bending the 12th fret to the 14th fret and the way to do this properly and efficiently is to use your ring finger for maximum power. You place your finger on the 12th fret but you can't bend it yet 
quite efficiently. So you place another finger behind it. Now that doesn't matter in terms of what note you're playing because as I said before, the closest the closest finger to your bridge is the note you're playing. So you're on the 12th fret. So you have so you're playing the 12th fret even if you place any finger behind it. Even if you place as many fingers behind it, you will still be playing the 12th fret. Now you put the middle finger on the 11th fret to have more power on it so now you can bend it the next step is to use your index finger to mute every other string and don't do it like this if it's straight like this it's not going to create as much power that you need so you have to angle your left hand a little bit and grab the neck firmly so that you can create even more power and by muting all the other strings when you when you slide your right finger across the fretboard the only note that you're playing is the 12th fret on the second string so once you've got this position right the next thing is to pick it so just pick the string and bend it up. Also make sure to not bend it all the way up because it might snap. You just bend it up and listen to it. And the best way that you can practice this bend and see if it's in tune is bending the note first and then checking on the 14th fret if it's in tune. <laughs> Now this specific bend is called the whole step bend in which you bend it up to two notes. Another bend that you can do is on the 14th fret. Now you can do it on any fret you want but it's much easier to do it on the higher frets than the lower frets. Now this is the full step bend, a whole step bend. If you do the bend a little bit you can achieve what is called the half step bend. <laughs> Talking about bends, there's also one technique called the pre-bend. This follows the same principle as bending, but what matters is when you pick. It is exactly what it sounds like. You bend it before picking, and then you pick it, and you then bring it down. So it's so it sounds like this. Moving on from bends, we have another technique called palm muting. Now this technique as it sounds doesn't require the full palm, it only uses the side of the palm. Now what I did there is I did a lot of down strokes but the trick is to place the side of your palm on the bridge so it partially mutes the notes. And this technique was used in the popular song Attention. It is a really fun technique and I think you can master it by repeatedly doing it. Next up we have power chords that every guitarist knows. These are two finger chords that you can play pretty easily. So I made that up right on the spot using only power chords. So to play power chords you only use two fingers and you have to place them on a certain distance. So the first finger goes on to 6th string 5th fret and then the last finger goes on to 5th string 7th fret. So this is the pattern of every power chord there is and you move this shape down you get another power chord, you move this back, another power chord, move this up another power chord so using these two fingers you can you, you can play every power chord there is this is the a5 power chord this is a flat 5 power chord g5 g flat 5 f5 and there's this e5 which is the open string and then this interval right here same thing you can do on the fifth string which uses fifth string and the fourth string using the fifth fret of the fifth string and then the seventh fret of the fourth string. This is D, this is C, this is A sharp, this is B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So this is how you play power chords. I'm not going to get into chords in this video because it's entirely a different topic. But what I'm going to get into is strumming. Strumming is extremely important when you play rhythm guitar. If you don't know any chords, it's okay. It's okay to practice strumming without any chords. You just mute the strings and to mute the strings you just 
simply place the whole hand on it. You don't press on it. You just simply do this. You just simply cover every string with the hand. And then you can practice strumming however you want. The most basic strumming patterns that I can come up with are... The most important part of strumming is how much pressure you put into each strum. Without the dynamic, it's not going to sound rhythmic. So some of the strokes need to have louder impacts on it as compared to some other strokes. In this example, the downstroke has more impact on it than the upstroke. So that is how you strum. It's a lot more detailed and intricate than, it, than what it looks like. So I think I'm going to spare the details for another day. Now the last piece of information that you need as a beginner guitarist is the tuning. And I don't mean the tuning like this tuning, I, I mean a different thing. As most of you would know, there are 12 notes in the musical scale. Each of these strings need to be assigned to one of those notes. And the system that they're assigned to is called the tuning system. The very first tuning system for a guitar is standard tuning, which is pretty obvious. From top to bottom, it goes E, A, D, and then G, B, E. So it, that is pretty easy to memorize. Then there are alternate tunings, a lot of alternate tunings. There's a tuning called drop D, which is which is pretty common in guitar playing. It drops the top string, which is E, down two notes to a D. But for now, I would suggest that you stick to the standard tuning. That's about it. I forgot to record an outro for the video, so I'm doing it separately. I know the video is very long, but if you had any understanding and help with it, consider giving it a like and a subscribe as well. And that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching.